Are you a thoughtful leader? Maybe you are. Maybe you think you are. Let's find out. I'm Mindy Gibbons-Klein. I'm author of The Thoughtful Leader and host of The Thoughtful Leader podcast. Thoughtful leadership is all about thought leadership that goes above and beyond. Thought leadership that is truly new and original, exciting, disruptive, maybe even groundbreaking. Because let's face it, we need to raise the bar. My guests and I are absolutely obsessed with finding truly original thought leadership. And I'm going to bring you so many exciting ideas and opportunities, things for you to think about and chances for you to push your thinking that you'll be very glad you tuned in. So thanks so much for checking out Thoughtful Leadership and the Thoughtful Leader podcast. I look forward to connecting with you very, very soon. Welcome to the show. My guest today is the amazing thoughtful leader, Tony J. Salimi. Hello, Tony. Hello, Mindy. Thoughtful leader that you are, I'm allowed to call you one. <laughs> We're talking about thoughtful leadership in the specific sense and also general. So before we launch into solving all the world's problems, which I know we can do, let's hear your take on what it means to be thoughtful. The word itself is self-explanatory, but for me, thoughtful is uh, linked to being mindful and to be soulful and to be heartful. So most people have heard of mindful, maybe soulful. Can you explain heartful? Because that is a great word. Absolutely. Heartful means when your heart rules your head. So while the head can be mindful, unfortunately, it cannot be mindful all the time. But as we learn to awaken our true wisdom from our heart, your heart can be the umbrella of your mind. It's almost like if you imagine like a mushroom. So the head of the mushroom is the head and the stem is the heart, which means it fuels everything that the mind needs to do, considering bringing the heart, the love you have for whatever you do in your life to rule your head. Because the head, if it's not controlled properly, can be like a, this fast river that can destroy any, anything on its way. But if that river is in its own bed, on that river bed, as it flows through countryside, you know, all these fields can be nurtured with water and everything can be grown. Similarly, like that metaphorically in our mind, our heart is that uh, river of energy that can nurture our mind to really create an amazing life and amazing leadership. Thank you for that wonderful explanation and the metaphor. I, I only like metaphors when they work <laughs> and that worked for me. <laughs> so um, are you actually saying that the heart is more important than the head? What I'm saying is both are extremely needed, Mindy. Uh, so I believe in using them in sync. Uh, but unfortunately, let's say, you know, we all have heard uh, the word when somebody feels heartbroken or when we have any form of ache that we can feel it in our chest, meaning when we have stress, when we have relationship issues, when we have anger, anxiety, depression, addictions. So in those cases, you know, this formula I, I just gave you does not apply. And most people use it, but they use it from a space where the heart is hurtful. Therefore, the decisions, the minds, they're going to be hurtful and vice versa. Gosh, there's a lot to explore here. I know you've written many books on this subject, and I know that the listeners will want to follow up on those thoughts. But I just wonder if you would be willing to share how you came up with these insights. I mean, how did you, how did you get to be the person you are now with these insights? Since I was a kid, Mindy, I had this curiosity about life. And I lived in a country in Yugoslavia, former Yugoslavia, where pretty much I would say I had a great life in my family life. But outside of that, there were so many things where, you know, by being, just simply being of a different creed, you're not treated equally. You know, women weren't treated equally. I saw how my mother was being abused in the family, despite that she was a very hard worker and, you know, taking care of the entire family. I'm, I'm talking about hundreds of people. I'm not talking about 
five people that today's most women would take care of. Mm-hmm. My mom looked after her own children, which is six of us, looked after my dad's entire family. Uh, she inherited seven other children because um, my grandmother died before I was even born. And plus all the workers in the fields, in the restaurants. And all I've known all my life is how much my mom project managed the entire family. But at the same time, she was never treated equally. And then in the society, if you're a different creed, different nationalities, you didn't have the opportunities to go to best schools. You didn't have the opportunities to work in a great job. And deep down, I knew this injustice. And deep down, I wanted to understand the science of life and why certain people can be so successful. Uh, Everybody opens up their door. Why certain people will have certain positions in the government, for instance? Why do they have to be the privileged people? And why that uh, on one hand, we have religions, all religions, because I grew up in a multi-religious culture and I come from a multi-religious family. Why they all say we are um, created in equal by God, but yet there's so much inequality at every sphere of life. But not just that, as you probably know in Path to Wisdom, I experienced uh, sexual abuse at a very young age and then without my parents even knowing. So there are so many issues out there happening around the world that normally parents are not even aware of. And as a child, uh, you don't have the psychology, nor the strength, nor the emotional intelligence to deal with those stressors and something that can really eat your life away. And then as an adult, majority of men or women, they don't talk about uh, those experiences and it affects their lives. So this also was another stressor that really forced me into learning and learning and learning both science and spirit. And then I went in one of the top schools in Macedonia uh, to study maths and engineering. And I was the best in the school, but I experienced bullying throughout four years, which almost destroyed my soul. Yet again, I saw another injustice. And then if that wasn't enough, I also ended up with severe illness in my heart and in my lungs, which I went in and out of life support for almost two years. And then my parents took me to the very same spiritual teacher who told my parents when I was born that I'll become this master healer going around the world and creating incredible results for other people, which my parents back then took me back to him and said, well, your predictions are wrong. And then I started learning healing techniques at a very young age. And then I was comparing how come the medical science are telling my parents I'm going to die. And this man who basically lives in the mountains, totally shielded from uh, the outer world using natural techniques makes me feel better. So I became curious about both science and esoteric ways of actually helping somebody. And what is out there that we really don't know? And I wanted to know uh, how can we get answers from the unseen and how we, can we merge together science, spirit, psychology, technology, business, life experiences, and create a tool that can help more people. And this is what really uh, started to give birth of methodology that I actually put in Path to Wisdom. Not just that, but being in a civil war, being homeless in London for many months, and then also as a migrant, to actually overcome all the adversities when you go into a new country as a teenager. I, you know, I celebrated my 20th birthday homeless on the streets of London. So not only I had all those adversities, but then even when my life was safe, I continued to have them and being treated like I'm the lowest of the lowest in the society. So this, there's this desire, huge calling to go out there and inspire people, no matter what backgrounds they come from, no matter what adversity to create a tool that they can use consistently to upgrade their mind in alignment with the reality they want to create. I am always blown away by your truthfulness, your transparency, the way you tell your story. And I always hear another part of the story that maybe I never heard before. Maybe I heard it, but I didn't really hear it. And the things that you have been through, okay, a lot of people have been through things. We know this. Two things stood out for me when you were talking, you used the word curious. Um, That is, you know, the thoughtful leader remains curious. And you used the question, how? I think a lot of people when they're suffering, they say, why? Why is this, why? But not, they don't really wanna know why, or that's not the best question to ask. But to move into the 
how, how can I use this experience in a thoughtful way? And you exhibited that because, you know, being a thoughtful leader isn't, okay, you are now a thoughtful leader. You have to step up and choose to be a thoughtful leader many, many times, sometimes every day. So we've been talking about that on the podcast and in my books. And would you say that's what you were doing and what you still do, Tony? Absolutely. I think you went into the core uh, because curiosity is something that really has helped me throughout life. Because no matter whether you experience something amazing in your life or something that challenges you to the core, curiosity can serve you quite well to basically embrace both situations and grow to the next level. Then on the other end, it's a lot of people spend years and years into trying to get DY, which means they're wasting a lot of time to really, truly transform their life. So one of the things I've done with all of my clients when uh, initially they have a consultation with me, is when I hear all this language, I straight away stop them and I reframe it for them. I ask them a question which leads to a reframing of instead of saying why, for instance, you know, a lot of people, let's say, could say things like, oh, I can't afford an expert coach or a mentor. And I say, okay, so what would change in your reality if you said to yourself, what can I do to make this affordable? You know, that's for me, it's a total leader in every situation, meaning whether you want to contribute into society, whether you are suffering from illness, what is it I can do to transform my reality? Instead of just grabbing the first pill, the second mm -hmm. pill, you never read the instruction in that pill. You never look at the consequences of your body and how your body will react to that specific pill. I'm not saying they're not useful. What I'm saying is we need to be mindful. So thoughtful leader uh, extends from you just a leader in a business. You need to be a thoughtful leader first and foremost with your physical health, your mental health, your emotional wealth, your relationship, your social life, your career business, and then when it comes to spirituality and family life. And when you start awakening those different thoughtfulness in a leader, and they start to creating more of an equilibrium in themselves, but also how they lead others into the vision. Yes, yes, yes. I can just picture the listeners at home nodding furiously, saying yes, <laughs> because this is really refreshing to hear. I, d I have mixed feelings about the pills because, you know, I know your partner is in the medical profession and perhaps, you know, sometimes people do need a pill if the doctor says, uh, I'm sure that's not what you meant. <laughs> no, I mean, that's why I said to you, there are cases where you need yes. that. But first and foremost, for instance, you know, if you have a, a severe infection, for sure you will need an antibiotic and stuff like that. What I'm saying is to be mindful before you bring yourself into that state. And if you're going to bring yourself into the state, for instance, a lot of people take pills for depression when there are other tools that can hit depression very quickly. With my method that I designed, I've been using now uh, TGSE method, the 25 principles to help people break through addiction, to help people break through uh, depression and all sorts of stuff. So there are tools out there, not just my method. Uh, you know, you have the Demartini method. You have other methods out there that people use to help people. So I always say to people, uh, before you make a, a choice, which way you want to handle a specific challenge, be informed and be mindful of the decisions you make. Yeah. And I've met some of your clients and it's very powerful to do these things, transform your life, maybe without the pharmaceuticals. You know, we are not here. We are not preaching. This is just we bring interesting guests onto the show to make people think because that's what the thoughtful leader does. Listen, take in different views, stop and reflect. And, you know, each person, it, guys, if you're listening to this and you have questions, you know, Tony's information is in the show notes. Reach out to him. Reach out to me. Stay connected to us because it's an ongoing conversation. So we're having an ongoing conversation and uh, I need to pick up on um, something else that you were talking about, if that's okay. Uh, Tony, you said, ask yourself the question, what can I do to transform my reality? I think that's exactly what you said. So the emphasis is on the individual. And what if they don't have the immediate answer? So they ask, what can I do? And the reflex response is, I don't know. If I knew, I would have done it. What do you say to that? 
Well, there's one thing about when I get people, when they say to me, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And you have this, uh, I believe everybody who's out there, coach, consultant, healer, therapist, uh, I know they would have heard this consistently from the clients who in the midst of adversity will feel themselves lost. But I do not support the notion that they don't. So therefore, I don't encourage and I don't actually look at it and I don't buy their answer. Mm -hmm. So a brilliant way to counteract that is ask an opening questions that eventually will lead to them giving you the answer. So, you know, when somebody says to me, I don't know this, I will ask them, so what time did you wake up in the morning? Okay. So I totally change the subject to make them realize that they can come up to the answer, meaning there are things that they know, because sometimes they believe that in that moment, they know nothing. Mm. And therefore, I take them out of confusion into the things they are clear about and they are certain about. So I build their clarity and certainty. And then I, I give them another question, which then I link their, uh, whatever they uh, hold very high on their values, that straight away they'll go for it. You know, some people would say to me, oh, I don't fight. I'm not aggressive. And I would pay, pose the question. So if somebody went in there and raped your child two years old, would you be aggressive? And straight away, they would say to me, yes, I'll kill the person. So, you know, there's those illusions that we built about ourselves that we don't have certain skills, we don't have certain reactions or certain emotions. We are a very complex individual. And if you learn how to work with person's psychology and you enable that psychology to consistently grow and start firing up different ways of thinking, that person eventually gets to the answer. This is such powerful content and <laughs> just recently we were having a discussion in the team about whether we should lengthen the episodes and I chose to be thoughtful and I said some episodes will end up longer and I think this is one of those so if you have more time I have more time and I'd love to carry on a bit longer because most of these episodes as people know are 20 minutes 25 but is it okay if we keep going? Absolutely. I'm always here to be of service to people. Yeah. And this is really wonderful content. So imagine that you are talking to somebody who's feeling lost, to use that word, uh, feeling like they're going through a crisis. And you are talking to people. I know there are people out there listening to this episode who are nervous, upset, fearful, etc. So, right, you're talking to them now. What immediate advice or questions do you have for them right now? Well, the first thing, Mindy, is that inside of us, all of us have specific callings. No matter how confused you are, no matter how lost you are, inside of you, you know what you want. And if you don't, let's say you are in that moment of confusion, the first thing you need to do is basically sit down and write down or establish what is that truly you value in your life? What is it that in that list of priority of your values, that no matter what happens externally, your voice is a louder than any voice on the outer reality. And it is that voice, that voice that comes from your true intuition that can easily guide you. And, you know, there are many methods out there for uh, value determination. I've created my own ones, and therefore people can use those ones. Uh, usually I use the 25 principles, but now with my other three books, I've created specific value determination processes that are simplistic because I've observed and I've studied many value processes down there. But unfortunately, most of people do not know how to get there. This is exciting. Um, Tony Salimi is an expert in many, many methodologies. And I hope you are starting to understand the depth of his learning, his knowledge, and the fact that he was curious, to go back to that word, and open, because when you're curious, then you're open, and you can soak up lots of ideas and come up with your own conclusions. So that's what I'm getting from this uh, interview. Every time I speak to Tony, I get the same feeling that there's, if we dig a bit deeper, there's even more where that came from. Would I be right, Tony? <laughs> yes, because the one thing, Mindy, it's, um, there are two worlds. It's our internal world, and which is extremely complex, and there's the external world. And I advise 
when I start the work with any client, regardless of what they're seeking of me, I'm looking at those two worlds. And in synchronizing those two worlds, you increase your chances of creating exactly what you want. And most people live with a mentality, with a psychology that got them where they are. And in order for you to move to the next steps, you for sure need to upgrade that psychology to be in alignment with the results and the outcomes that you want. This is where the biggest struggle is, where people don't know how to do those alignments. You know, the reason I spent 30 years in research and studied both technology, psychology, spirituality, healing, I looked into cosmology, I looked into the physiology of the body, biology, chemistry, uh, quantum physics. When I actually started the method, the method has grown so much since I published the book with you that I've seen consistent results with my clients of actually awakening those quantum states within ourselves to be in alignment with the reality you want to create. But most people live their life with an outdated caveman psychology. We don't have any cavemen listening to the Thoughtful Leader podcast. <laughs> but yes, most people who are not our listeners. But I think we do, Mindy. And the reason I'm saying that, we all have it. Okay. We all have the reptilian brain, and we all have the midbrain, and we all have the frontal cortex brain. And they all work together. So it's not like we don't have people. We do have it. The problem is we don't have the awareness of that. How our choices, our decisions in day-to-day -day life come from one of those brains. We might think it comes from here, but then the result is not there. You know, when I speak to people, even if I give them one piece of wisdom, they say to me, I know that. And then when I start asking 20 questions, they realize they don't. But their first response is, I know that. I know how to make money. Okay. What's your bank account? Let's look at the evidence, okay? So just simple question like that. So if you know, the knowing is matches your reality. If the reality doesn't match it, I go back and teach them the first step in path to wisdom, which is the principle of present moment awareness, which means there's no link in there. Knowing comes from certainty, meaning your internal reality and your external reality match. So if you tell me I've written a book, I know how to write a book, but you don't have a book, you don't. You're only aware of how to write a book or, you know, become a bestseller. No, you don't because you've never become a bestseller or sell hundred thousands of copies. No, you don't. You have never become that. But we tend to use those words. And when we tell ourselves, I know, as we put a lid on our intelligence, which means we're not allowing ourselves to grow. And while I'm saying that, I have some incredible news. Go on. And it's interesting that, you know, we were on the phone with you. Look what just arrived. Oh, wow. Okay. Like, you just arrived. This is like, <laughs> <laughs> the newest baby in the nursery. Like, baby, yes. So, yes, but remember, the listeners who are audio only, they don't know what we're excited about because they didn't see that. <laughs> it's my fourth book, The Unfakeable Code. Take back control, live authentically, and live freely on your terms. On your terms. Um, Tony, these are just more gems that we're filling a whole treasure chest full of gems here. I'm very excited that um, you have now been introduced to the Thoughtful Leader community. As a true thoughtful leader, I'm about to ask you what could be a challenging question, but I know that you're up to, the, you're up to this. I know you will answer it. What is a mistake or error of judgment that you made that you're willing to talk about uh, that worked out okay. So yeah, it, at the time it was like, oh, and, but it worked out okay. But you know, tell the listeners, because so many times we have, you know, people who we put on a pedestal, the guru, whatever, you know, but tell them something that happened to you that you're maybe not so proud about. If you can think I of think that. through every stage of my life, Mindy, I've had those things, and I believe I'll continue to make them regardless how thoughtful and mindful I am, because life will present us with new challenges we know nothing about. So, you know, as you know, first and foremost, I don't see any more mistakes as errors and judgments. I see them as things that I need to overcome within my growth. But if I look back with my caveman psychology <laughs> in, in inverted <laughs> commas, there have been many times that if I had this awareness, I would not make those decisions. An example of that, which I'm very open to talk about it, when due to my cultural upbringing and uh, 
all the demands from my family, I made the decision to get married, knowing I was gay. So my entire body knew the truth, but my entire mind, all of my psychology made a decision to please everybody else. So I was a 100% a people pleaser. And I'm actually talking about it in The Unfakeable Code, specifically about being a people pleaser. And not just that, but also self-deception. So what you're uh, touching on with that question is self-deception. When we basically, um, we make decisions which not aligned with what we truly feel, want, and love. Those are three things. Because the feeling will for sure guide you unless you have other things going on, which then your guidance system is skewed. The knowing will guide you and what you love and what you want, because the want will come up from your deepest desires and voids that then shape your values and grow your values as you grow as an individual. And in your heart, you straight away know what you love. So when we skew out of those three things, then we end up our self-deception or our people-pleaser persona riding our life. So you are total out of control. So in the unfakeable code, I'm really bringing people a new method, another five-step method, very clean method that people can use to go back into authenticity. Because for me, total leader, you need to be extremely authentic. And being authentic, sometimes you do upset others. Okay. That is, I think we will leave it there because there is so much more to learn from this man. And you will all find his details below in the show notes. But Tony, what is your preferred way for people to get in touch with you? Because I know there's so many. How can they find you? Uh, people can really go to my website, tonyselimi.com. And uh, there are links to all of my social media. They can follow me on social media. And uh, also they can get uh, free chapters of my books in there. And uh, for people who wants to take action, they can get in touch directly with my PA info at tonyselimi.com and they can book a consultation and start an incredible journey. Or for people who are already running six to nine figure businesses, I always recommend people to go into my immersive five day experience around the world that I teach. And it's all about planning. And when we're talking about planning, I literally uh, go inside of your psychology, fire at you thousands of questions and extract everything. And we create a roadmap for the reality you want to create. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for your generosity today, for sharing from the heart. You are absolutely authentic. You have helped so many people and you're about to help many more. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode as much as we have. So let's say goodbye to Tony J. Salini, but it's not goodbye, it's see you soon. <laughs> see you soon. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Thoughtful Leader, and I hope it's inspired you to be more thoughtful as a leader in your business. Please consider subscribing and leaving a review. An important question for you. Do you want to create a culture of thought leadership in your organization? My best-selling book, The Thoughtful Leader, is available now on Amazon and many other sites in paperback, ebook, and audiobook formats. Please visit www.mindygk.com for more great content. That's www.mindygk.com. Speak to you again soon.